keep it together. <laughs> Sometimes when I see Ben, I just start laughing. <laughs> that was a really professional way to start this interview. So I'm, I'm here today with two of the stars of the new film, I'm Not Ashamed. I'm here with Mason and Elaine. Say hello to everyone, Mason. Hey. And I'm here with the awesome and funny looking Ben Davis as well. <laughs> what up? <laughs> awesome. Now, before we get on to talk about the new film, let's let's get to know the people behind behind you guys. Um, so if you could just take in turns to quickly introduce who you are, how you got started in acting, how you became a Christian. And we'll start with Ben. Let's go Ben first. Yeah, um, my name is Ben Davies. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. I don't know if you know where that is, but it's kind of like in the middle of the United States. Um, and in that area of the country, it's really the Bible Belt kind of area. So a lot of people grew up in the church, and I grew up in the church, but... When I was uh, a freshman going into high school, I had a mentor take me out to LA and I went to a, a church conference and that was the first time that I really understood, you know, I knew the verses and then these quotes, but I didn't know what it meant to have a relationship with God. And so that was the moment where I kind of understood that and started that whole walk with the Lord. And then I was really being blessed and was pursuing a career in track and field and going to the Olympics. That was like my whole goal. And then uh, my sophomore year of, of college, I had a potentially career ending injury um, and I was a devastating part of my life, but it got me to the first time in my life where I was like, okay, God, you know, whatever you want me to do with my life, I'll do kind of thing. And then after I had the surgery and I was in the big sling, I got a call from my agent that asked uh, if I had time to go to an audition. And I was like, yeah, I've got six months where my coaches don't care what I'm doing, so I'll do whatever. And uh, it was for uh, maybe Courageous. And I went down there to Sherwood Pictures and then booked that role. And then from that moment, the Lord opened a door into Christian entertainment and film. And I remember, you know, thinking when I got the phone call, I booked the job. I was like, almost the Lord told me, why did you doubt that I had a plan for this? Like, why did you have such little faith? So that was my uh, small story of how the Lord got me into acting, how the door opened up. Awesome. And now we're going to get to Macy, who is um, sitting at a lovely star Starbucks today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I gave my heart to the Lord when I was seven. And um, I grew up in a really awesome family. And I started acting when I was a freshman in high school. I just did some plays. And I, I realized I loved it, so I got a, an agent in TV and film. And then, um, but it was more kind of a hobby then. It was just fun to me. Um, but the whole acting ride, it, it really is a roller coaster, you know. Um, I don't know, it's a, it's a lot of waiting and it's a lot of auditioning. It's, it's not anything that's overnight. And it's, it takes a lot of perseverance. And, uh, so I was kind of contemplating about quitting a lot, uh, but then my sophomore, this is funny, Ben, we have like the same years going on. My <laughs> sophomore year of college, yeah, freshman year of high school, then my sophomore year of college, um, I felt the Lord really just saying that this is what I needed to do, um, and just kind of giving me a new passion for it again, and, and I just felt His call in it. Um, and then about two years ago, um, I got a call for the I'm Not Ashamed role, and I auditioned for it, and... It, that lasted for about a year. The process of auditioning for me took about a year. And it was a really kind of a roller coaster of a year. And really that year prepared me more than anything to play the role of Rachel. I think the Lord brought me to really a place of just total surrender um, and just trust that if he calls you to do something, first of all, he's your promoter and he, he's the one that will make it happen. And uh, if he calls you to do something, he'll give you everything you need to do it. So that's how I'm here. <laughs> awesome. Now... I, I, I could chat to both of you and get to know both of you um, for ages and hours and hours and hours. But we're here today to talk about I'm Not Ashamed, which released last Friday. Um, so can you kind of just tell us about how you kind of prepped for, for each of your roles and, and how you got prepared to play these real-life characters? <laughs> you want to go first, Macy, or me? Uh, you, you, can go go, you, you can go first, Ben. All right, so I, I, I love talking about this movie because it's, it's honestly my favorite movie that I've ever been a part of. Like, I've been, a, I've been fortunate to be part of 17 really cool inspirational films, but this sets itself apart. Like, I love this movie, and I've, every time I've watched it, I've enjoyed it. And so when I first um, got the script, I immediately was captivated, and I knew this was something I really, really wanted to play, and I was hoping the Lord would allow me to do it. And fortunately, um, because of uh, uh, the way that my character, they already kind of knew my character would be in the movie, and it wasn't as extensive. I actually was one of the first people that booked and signed on to be a part of Courageous because Macy's process was very long because they just auditioned a whole bunch of people for, for her role. But I jumped on early, which is so cool because I was able to see you know, all of Macy's auditions and all the other people too. And 
character getting cast, which is awesome. And then for me, with my character, I play uh, Nathan Ballard in, in the movie, and he's based on a real person who um, Rachel befriended, and they really did share that personal journal together. So for me, as an actor, this is the first time I felt the pressure to um, do justice to a person and not just a character that's when created in a room. You know, this was it meant way more, way more to me, and it meant way more to the person that I was representing. So, you know, for me as an actor, it, it brought me to a place of uh, a lot of pressure and a lot of worry. But at those times, that's when you usually like let you, you let yourself go and let God, because I was like, oh, I mean, I can't pull this off on my own. So it was, it was a lot of prayer. Um, prepping for the role and then reading through their handwritten journals and stuff and I spent time preparing for the role physically uh, because I knew what it was like to be 19 and insecure which my character was but I had no idea what it's like to be homeless so I you know I wore the tattoos and the wardrobe and went downtown and found out firsthand a little small 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 taste of what it was like to be um, rejected and, and neglected and people look down on you um, and then what that would feel like and also what it would feel like to have someone in real life like Rachel go out of a way and so no one else would see value and what that would mean to me and it brought me to a place of, of emotional task that I've never felt before you know to try to, to understand what that would feel like and so having that um, that prep I think really helped me for the role and then also having the journals was was a huge um, advantage I think for all of us because you know, I took it from the cinema to real life, which is, which is really cool. Okay, cool. Now, now your, your turn, Macy. <laughs> well, um, honestly, I was kind of the same. I was really intimidated going into the role. I just kind of kept thinking, like, how in the world did I get did I get here? And especially because the audition process was so long that I even had thoughts of like, you know, like, well, they doubted so many times, like, why am I doing this? Um, but at the same time, I knew deep down, and I knew in my gut that God had called me to do it. And even when I got the first audition, I knew that. Sorry, there's people in the back. <laughs> um, and it was, I don't know. And, and there were so many people along the way that would constantly encourage me and, and just remind me of the confidence of God that I had going in into it. And Ben was one of those people uh, that just kind of, I remember at first I was so just uptight about, like, how do I get this right and wanting to please people and um, just not thinking that I was, you know, just not thinking I was good enough. And one day he just told me, it was just like, just let it go. Like, just trust that God has you here for a reason and like, just do it, you know, just let go and, and even be you. And so that was huge. And then um, an actress that I respect and love and, you know, never expected to get an email from, emailed me one day and gave me the most incredible professional advice I'd ever, uh, I'd ever really gotten. And so, I don't know, God just did so many little things uh, leading up to it. Uh, to really just totally prepare me, like I said, give me everything I needed. And even the director we got to work with was, oh my gosh, just incredible. And um, I don't know, he was the kind of director that was, everything you saw happen on screen was a result of him standing with us behind the scenes and just in the trenches with us. Everything we felt, he felt. Um, and just helping us navigate and, and how to express what we wanted to express so I don't even know if that makes sense but we just really had an incredible team too um, and why are you laughing Ben? <laughs> I'm, just ben? I'm just enjoying hearing you talk about the talk about everything. Oh <laughs> um, <laughs> we're really <laughs> like brothers and sisters alive, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I do wanna, I wanna brag on Macy too because it's so cool a lot of you know big time studio actors they'll be like okay I need six months to prepare for a role but because the uh, the process of making movie was so long, and Macy kept auditioning, it was it was a true testament to her her heart for the film and her servant's heart. Because each time she auditioned and didn't get the role, she would still be like, "Hey, I'll just come and be a be a you know an extra on set." And so because of that, they keep kept bringing her back, and there was just something about her every single time. So like every couple months, she would re audition and keep preparing for the role. So the Lord working in mysterious ways through someone with a servant's heart was able to Aww. literally prepare a role for a year, which is just incredible. And you can see the results on, on, on the big screen and all the uh, the reviews that Macy's received. It's just, it's all sitting from, you know, the Lord prepping her because she had a servant's mentality and a heart towards this role that she cared so much about. So I just want to brag on Macy for that. <laughs> um, th th this, th this, is, this is why you blush, Macy. Uh, <laughs> um, so, what, Ben, you mentioned earlier about Rachel's journal and what have you, and you, you were working directly from Rachel's journal for this film. What was it like to read through her real-life journals and then take those and kind of act them out and bring them to life? 
Well, I mean, it was absolutely surreal. I mean, it's those stories that I think captivate everybody. I told um, in an interview in the past that the most, the greatest story ever told is the Bible. And, you know, obviously one, it's you know, God's indwelling word and, and us, our connection to him. But the reason why it's so transcendent to everyone is because they're looking at it. And you know that someone in a cave just didn't make these, these characters up and put them in extreme situations to be interesting. It's people, real people living their lives through Christ. Like in a fallen world, whole clinging to Jesus the entire time. And so like this story is is just like that because this girl you know she wasn't she didn't think anyone would read these journals she didn't think she didn't know how she would make a difference in the world she just knew that god put on her heart that she would touch millions of people and um so when you read the journals it's just it, you connect with it and you connect with the story and you connect with the movie so it was just so different for me um reading a script like that and um it, it was an experience that i you know will cherish the rest of my life okay now Macy, I understand you met Rachel Joy Scott's actual mother on set. What was it like yeah. meeting her, and what what was her theme, What was her kind of guidance to you? Yeah, well, before I even got to set to film, before I even went to Nashville to film, uh, she called me, and we hadn't met in person yet. But she just told me how proud she was of me, and that she was confident that God had called me to do to do the role. And um, I don't know, that meant just hearing like her affirmation and her confidence in that and that you know because sometimes you think you can't live up to someone's expectations and it, it's kind of it's really intimidating but that helped me so much and I just knew from the get-go that she was for me and that um, it was gonna be special and then when I met her I mean a comment that she made one time was <laughs> she felt like it was like having Rachel back uh, when I was around her and that's just so like I said, that's only something God could do honestly because I don't know. It's nothing I I never got to study Rachel really like her quirks and personality and um, so really it's only something God could do. But every time I'm around her, it is so special, and I, I love her so much. Cool, cool. Now, but but I understand that the things like the, the gloves in the cafe shop scene and the and the car and the handprint on the back of the chest are are, re, are real and from real life. But were the, were the dog tags real? Or were they a part of that story? This is a great story. I'm glad you asked that. So <laughs> I didn't get to meet the guy I really played until after we shot the movie, and after the script was written and everything. And I, uh, I, before the premiere, I sat down with him for a couple hours and just, you know, picked his brain and talked with him. And it was great because he even said, you know, he felt like he uh, stopped watching a movie and re was reliving a memory, which is the best review I could hope for. But, yeah, throughout the movie, we have so many things that were real to life, like the handprint and, like you said, the gloves and all that kind of stuff. But the dog tags... When, we, when they were writing the movie, they wanted to show that I was giving the most important person in my life, which was Rachel, the most valuable possession I had, just to show how much she meant to me. And, and so that scene was, was really important to me, and it was, it was a moment that I loved. And then I was, when I was talking with the real guy, he was like, yeah, man, why would you, you guys use a, a dog tags? Like, why didn't you use the ring? And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, I, I gave her my my grandfather's uh, masonry ring, and that was my most, most valuable possession. And that's what I gave to her. Why, did, why didn't you guys use that? And I was like, we didn't know. That was, I was like, it was just the Holy Spirit working through the writers because no, we, we had no idea like what actually he, uh, he gave her. So that was, I mean, that just blew my mind because, you know, that doesn't just happen. And it was just, it really spoke true to the way the whole movie's been. It's been just one miracle after another, having it all come together. And I'm glad that we could, you know, get it as close to real life as possible. Cool, cool. Now, a, a question to you, Macy. What was it? What was it like? Kind of, what was it like being around and in Rachel's actual car? What was in her like car? The, remember yeah. when we sat there together the first time? Yeah, it was. Oh my gosh, it was so surreal. I mean, even like you were saying earlier, digging through her journals, sitting in her car. Um, I don't know. I feel like the whole time it was just so. I think we knew the the you know the the weight of the story that we were telling, but we were also I don't know everybody on set was so impacted by her life and so like touched to the core by it, and I think we just knew how much it was going to make an impact when it was shown um, after, and so we were just kind of amazed we got to be a part of it really and got to I don't know it's still kind of surreal. I, yeah, I remember because we, we sat in the car together, Macy sat in the front seat, and I sat in the passenger seat, and it was just silence because you just... We sat there. We literally, like, could not talk. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's like, wow, okay, we're doing this. Like, and this is... This is that, yeah. That's, that's understandable. That's understandable. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, it, 
I'm not ashamed of single-handedly the most powerful film I've ever personally watched. What was no. the most powerful yes. part? What wow. was the most powerful part of the story um, for you guys of Rachel's actual life? What was the most most impactful moment of uh, yeah. the, the yeah. movie for us? Yeah. Um, man. <laughs> It's such a hard question. <laughs> it's a good question, though. It is. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, you want you to go first. Okay. Um, man, there are so many. Are, are you Okay, if I'm saying, like, what I hope people take away from it, um, I would say one thing that always sticks out to me about this film is that even, like, even, like you see in the movie, Rachel knew she was going to make an impact on the world one day. She even traced her hand and wrote that she would touch millions of people's hearts. Uh, but she had no way of knowing that it would be through her death that millions of people would hear about the impact that she made and she truly would touch millions of people's hearts. Um, but when she was alive, she was so faithful, honestly, to, to just to, to be faithful where God had put her, you know? She didn't wait for that opportunity to make an impact or she didn't wait for a platform or a group of influence or um, a promotion. She really was just faithful to God where he put her, and that was at Columbine High School. And she didn't just go through life or pass by people. She truly saw people and and stopped to love them. And, and I think that's how you really change the world, and that's how you make a difference. And I don't know. If we all did that, we could make the same impact um, if we saw people the way she did and, and were faithful where we are, and not just wait for the next thing that's going to make us better or promote us or get us, you know, climb the ladder. It's just like, no, let's, let's live how Jesus called us to live and serve people. So that's a big thing I hope people take away, and that still sticks with me. Yeah, I think, well, my favorite scene of Macy's is when she's at the, the, the bonfire. <laughs> and uh, But uh, <laughs> I would say as far as the uh, scene that I, like, I feel the most in it, is when she asked uh, Austin to go on the date on that Friday. Because mm -hmm. it's just such a great representation of what Rick for Jesus is all about. It's not like sometimes we get so wrapped up in these big events, like, okay, in a month we're going to have this giant fast and do this huge awesome thing, and yeah, that's great yeah. for those people who have been, but you don't realize every day when you bump into somebody, you have an opportunity to, to, to lift them up the way and, and treat them the way Jesus treated us. And so when she asked him that, it's a sweet gesture, and that's cool, and it impacted him. But when she walks by, it's not doing it for the camera. didn't get everyone's attention, like, look at me. And Sean sees her. We had a negative um, view of what Christianity was. And we're just, I think we're, we, we sit in an ivory tower and just look down on people or whatever. And you just saw her, you know, being selfless, going out of her way to help people. That impacted him. Yeah. And then you also get to see the chain reaction with the, um, the bullet or the, the jocks at the school when Austin kind of gets in their friend group with Matthew Schuler's character and, and then that kind of changed. It, cha it changes the whole dynamic of that world that seemed unhelpable. Like it was just stuck. Colin Columbine was stuck in this click, in this world where people just did not get along. And then all of a sudden, because of one kind gesture, you know, not just her wanting to be a good person, but literally because she knew the way that her life was with Christ, and this was just an extension of it. Seeing that happen all at once in one scene, it just like it blows me away, and it convicts me as a person too. Because on a daily basis, I could do that so many times. I, I could go out and like, you know, just ask this person how they're doing. Like I could just hold the door open and say more than hello to this person, talk to them, have a conversation. There's something you can do like every day. Cause like I said, Rachel wasn't president. She wasn't a superhero. She was a 17 year old suburban girl in Colorado. Yeah. You know? And so it's just, uh, I think that's probably my favorite scene too. Uh, it gets me every time I watch the movie. Well, thanks very much for, for covering the question I was about to ask. <laughs> was oh, go ahead and ask. <laughs> um, so, Last couple of questions because we've got to wrap this up in a few minutes' time, sadly. Um, but Macy, how hard was it to shoot the at one, the pretty much the final scene where you're you come face to face with the shooters, and and you have to own up to your faith? Yeah, it was. I I was really scared about that day because I don't know. I feel like it was the day that everyone was kind of you know antsy about and kind of. I mean, we knew the weight of it, and. Um, I don't know. It was, it was heavy. But I remember I woke up that morning and uh, God brought me to the story of Stephen in the Bible. And if you know, uh, Stephen was the first martyr mentioned in scripture. And it says before they killed him that he looked up into heaven and he saw the glory of God. And they saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And I don't know. I, I, I really, when, when we were filming, that's what flooded my mind the entire time. And 
as crazy as it sounds, I've never felt the presence of God that strong before. And I've never, I, I didn't know that I would feel his love that tangible that day. When I, you would think you would feel fear. Um, and just like Stephen felt that and saw the glory of God, saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God, I really believe that Rachel experienced the love of God more than anything and the hope that she had rather than fear in those last few moments. And I, I really think that's why she was able to say, you, you know I believe in God. She couldn't deny Him. Um, he was everything to her. And so I, I'll never forget that day when people ask me what my favorite scene is. Um, I wouldn't say that's like, you know, the most fun scene, but that's a, that's a scene, I'll, I, most special day I'll never forget. It was a, just a mixture of heartbreaking and, and also just complete awe at the Lord. And it was, I don't know, I, I, it's almost like I felt the Lord just totally wrap his arms around me, and, and I knew that's what Rachel, Rachel experienced, that she was okay, that he had her. So. Cool. Now, two, two very quick questions to, to finish up on. Um, Macy, I understand that you recently surprised people outside of the theatre. <laughs> um, what, 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 were their, what were their reactions, and were they really surprised to see you? <laughs> yes, yeah, they came out of the theatre, and I was literally just standing there, and I didn't want to make it weird or anything, but of course it was weird. And they were just like, what? <laughs> because I feel like they're like an emotional shock because they just experienced something that, I mean, they were still processing everything that happened. And then, you know, I traumatized them when I'm standing out there. But they were really shocked at first, but then they got really excited. And they went to take pictures and they were just like, I can't believe you're alive. I can't <laughs> believe you're here. <laughs> so... It was, it's always fun. It's fun to do that. It's like, oh, you know, when else am I going to be able to do that? So, <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Ben, uh, you should do it. I should do it. I really should do it. I'm not, we should oh, do it together. Yeah, I, 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 I think you should do it together. I think you should film it. <laughs> yes, and we'll send it to you. <laughs> yes. All right, last question to you, Ben. And this kind of doesn't really have anything to do with film, really. But um, in your Q&A on Facebook last night with... Um, with uh, the other actor, sorry, I've got his name. Yeah, Cameron McHenry, yeah. Yeah, Cameron McHenry. You kind of, you, you revealed in the DVD extras that we're going to get to see a kind of WWE kind of fight scene with you. So <laughs> the most important question of this whole interview, what would your wrestling name be? Oh, man. <laughs> I would be the Beast Oh, man. man. The Beast the what? The Beast Ben, yeah. I'll probably do that. No, we don't actually, I don't want to get your hopes up. We don't actually <laughs> play in the DVD. Uh, I just really wanted to throw hands on him. And actually, the, the character in real life knew that guy in real life and said he was. He really wanted to hurt him too. So I'm glad it came off like that. But yeah, I really, <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could have fought, but you know, it, it didn't happen. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, as we wrap this up, is there what specifically? What, how can we be praying for you in, in the coming weeks and, and how can people support this movement? Um, I would say, uh, you know, just, just praying for us as, even as the movie's getting more, you know, more and more exposure, um, I don't know, that we would just, our ears would be attuned to what God wants to say through us and that we would, um, you know, of course, give credit to where credit's due and, and that people's eyes would be turned to Him. Um, and more so that people, that this would radiate hope. And I pray that when we're in interviews and anything, that um, that's the banner that, that people see across the movie, across us, and that they're drawn to it more than anything. Um, so I, I would pray that that shows uh, to people, especially that people that aren't believers. And uh, to support the movie, uh, this weekend, I don't know when this is going to be shown, but go see the movie. Fine. Okay, awesome. This weekend is really huge. Um, you know, don't wait to go see it. Go see it now, uh, just because we don't know when it's going to be, you know, out of theaters. So we got to fill up the theaters for it so it can stay in longer. And, it, you know, who knows when it'll be out. So don't wait to go see it. And then also you can get on Rotten Tomatoes, Fandango, and IMDb, and you can write your own review for the film. And a lot of people might think their voice doesn't matter. It's like, oh, who cares about that? But really and truly, Hollywood does care about what you say and what you have to think about it. And the audience review is huge. And to, to rate it with the stars and everything. So uh, just to support it, you can do that. Ben, to you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I would just <laughs> tell everyone pray that yeah. it's the movie. 
is it for what it's intended to be and it's supposed to show hope and light through tragedy and just anyone that who's directly involved with the film that that message would come across clear that you know there's hope in this tragedy and anyone that sees it that may not may be confused about the, you know the, the actual events and the story that they would just see the movie for what it's what it's meant to be and what it's about and that's about Rachel's life and her living her life for Jesus so I just I would just have everyone pray that everyone's lives would be touched in the way that it was intended to be. And then for everyone, yeah, everyone go out and see it now. Like this, this is the time, cast your vote. Now, now. So, yeah, you can you know, <laughs> This is the time. time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, the time like, is now. 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 <laughs> Don't wait. And post about it and post about it. So yeah, post know. about it. Tag us, we will talk to you back. That's how they cut the music, I, uh, sadly, I, I, I could I could talk to you about this film for hours, and um, we haven't even come close to covering all the questions I ha had for you guys. But we've got to, we've got to wrap this up because we've got to let you go, sadly. So, um, thank you very much for talking to us today. It's been awesome. It's been a pleasure. Ah, uh, thank you so much. I so appreciate it, man. Really, thank you so much. Right, that was Mason McLean. That was Ben Davis. They're in the new film. I'm not. not I'm not ashamed. It's about the real life story about Rachel Roy Scott. Make sure you go and see it this weekend and take tissues with you because you're going to need them. Um, so thank you very much. God bless. Take thank care. you.